Chapter Four of Christmas Eve at Swamp's End by Norman Duncan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Four, Christmas Eve at Swamp's End. As for poor little Patty Batch, all this while she sat alone, a doleful heart in the shack at the edge of the big black woods, quite unaware of the momentous advent of a Christmas baby at Swamp's End. The Christmas wind was still high still shaking the cabin, still rattling the door, still howling like a wild beast in the night, still roaring in the red stove, and snow was falling again, a dry dust of snow which veiled the wondering stars. It was no longer a jolly, rollicking Christmas wind. The gale now, it seemed, was become inimicable to the lonely child, wild, vaunting, merciless, terrible with cold. Patty Batch, disconsolate, sighed more often than a tender heart could bear to sanction in a child, and found swift visions in the glowing coals, though no enlivening tableau. But, dear brave and human little one, she presently ejaculated, Shoot it anyhow, and began at once to cheer up and she was comfortably toasting her shins in a placid delusion of stormy, mile-wide privacy, her mother's old-fashioned long black skirt drawn up from her dainty toes, of which, of course, the eminent John Fairmeadow was never permitted to be aware, when, all at once, and clamouring above the old wind's howling, there was a tremendous knocking at the door a knocking so loud and commanding, and prolonged, that Patty Batch jumped like a fawn in alarm, and stood for a moment with palpitating heart and a mighty inclination to fly to the bedroom and lock herself in. Presently, however, she mustered courage to call, "'Come in!' in a sufficient tone, whereupon the door was immediately flung wide, and big John Fairmeadow, with a wild, dusty blast of the gale, strode in with a gigantic basket, and slammed the door behind him, leaving the shivering, tenacious shadow, which had secretly followed from Swamp's End, to keep cold vigil outside. "'Hello there, Patty Batch!' John Fairmeadow roared. "'Merry Christmas!' Patty Batch stared. "'Hello, I say!' John Fairmeadow cried again. "'Merry Christmas, ye rascal!' Patty Batch, gulping her delight, and quite incapable of uttering a word, because of it, flew to the kitchen, instead of to the bedroom, and returned with a broom, with which, while the shadow peeked in at the window, she brushed and scraped and slapped John Fairmeadow so vigorously that John Fairmeadow scampered into a corner and stood at bay. "'Look out there, Polly Pry!' he shouted in a rage. "'Don't you dare look in my basket!' Patty Batch had been doing nothing of the sort. "'Don't you so much as squint at my basket!' John Fairmeadow growled. Patty Batch instantly did, of course, and with her eyes wide and sparkling, too. It was really something more than a squint. "'Keep your eyes off that basket, Miss Pry,' John Fairmeadow commanded again. "'Huh!' he complained, emerging from his refuge and throwing his mackinaw and cap on the floor. "'Anybody'd think there was something in that basket for you.' "'There if Patty Batch gasped in ecstasy. "'Is!' John Fairmeadow scornfully mocked. "'Huh!' Patty Batch caught John Fairmeadow by the two lapels of his coat, and she stood on tiptoe, and she wouldn't let John Fairmeadow turn his head away, as if John Fairmeadow cared to evade those round glowing eyes, and she looked into his grey eyes with a bewitching conglomeration of hope, amusement, curiosity, and adoring childish affection. "'There ith, too,' she chuckled, her lisp getting the better of her. "'Yeth, there ith. I know you, Mither Fairmeadow.' 
john fairmeadow ridiculously failed to smother a chuckle in a growl doth it bite patty batch inquired maliciously feigning a terrific fright nonsense john fairmeadow declared it hasn't a tooth in its head he added with one eye closed and palms uplifted but uh, aha just you wait and see well patty batch drawled i suppose it's a turkey it's certainly something to eat she declared good enough to eat i bet you john fairmeadow agreed with the air of having concealed in that veritable big basket the sweetest morsel in all the world is it a chicken nonsense said john fairmeadow it's far more delicious than chicken hi there paul pry he roared and just in time keep your hands off is it anything for the house no indeed the house is for it patty batch scowled in perplexity the back yard too john fairmeadow added and don't you forget that this whole place and all the world belongs to just what's in that basket i'm sure poor patty batch mused scratching her curls in bewilderment i can't guess what it could be both were now staring at the basket and at that very moment the blanket covering stirred it's a dog patty batch exclaimed dog the outraged john fairmeadow roared nothing of the sort no ma'am patty batch clasped her hands it is too she cried i saw it move it is not it's a kitten then it is not a kitten thereupon while the shadow by whom john fairmeadow had been dogged that night now peered with acute attention through a break in the frost on the window-pane thereupon without any warning save a second slight movement of the blanket a sound and not by any means a growl the thing was certainly not a dog a sound proceeded from the depths of the basket patty batch jumped away well well cried john fairmeadow what's the row row indeed patty batch was gone white and she swayed a little and shivered too and clenched her little hands to restrain her amazing hope oh she moaned at last far short of breath enough tell me quick is it is it uh uh john fairmeadow threw back the blanket in a most dramatic fashion and there wrapped in the neglected fawn-skin cloak all dimpled and smiling lay the baby by george screamed patty batch it is a baby your baby john fairmeadow whispered god's christmas gift to you patty batch adorable young mother reverently approached and bending with parted lips eyes shining and hands laid upon her trembling heart for the first time gazed content upon the little face she lifted then and with what awe and tenderness the tiny mortal from the warm basket and pressed it with knowing arms against her warmer softer young breast my baby she crooned her lips close to its ear my little baby my own little baby end of chapter four christmas eve at swamp's end end of the book christmas eve at swamp's end by norman duncan